Hey guys, what's up? It's Eric with Advanced Level Automotive. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. Now, as promised before on my channel, I did tell you guys that I was gonna start doing some videos getting more into the locksmithing and key programming side of the industry. I've recently discovered a passion with this side of the industry. I've been doing it now for almost a year and I wanna show you guys some of the things that I've learned. So maybe I can help some of you guys that are interested in getting into this field. Now, one of the most common questions that I see asked over and over again by aspiring locksmiths is, what equipment should I buy? What is the best key programmer? Where should I start? So in this series of videos, I'm gonna try and help you guys decide what key programmer slash key tool is best for you. Now, I will preface this video by saying there is not one key programmer that does everything. So if you guys are looking for that magic bullet, that one key programmer that just does everything, well, I got bad news for you guys. It doesn't exist. In this industry, you're gonna find out that you pretty much are required to buy many different programmers in order to cover as many vehicles as possible. But what I hope to do with this video is give you guys a starting point, show you guys the tool that I use for almost 90% of the vehicles that I program keys for. So over here in my toolbox, as you guys can see, I've got all of my most commonly used key programmers and key tools. Starting over here on the left, I have the Xtool IK618. Over here, I've got the Autel IM508. Over here to the right, we've got the Launch X431 Emo Plus. Over here, I've got the X-Horse Key Tool Max. Here, I've got the Key DIY KDX2. And I have my X-Horse Mini Key Tool. However, the one I wanna show you guys in this video is this little bad boy right here. This is the Autel KM100. Now, unlike the IM508, the KM100 was designed to be more of a portable handheld key tool. But let me make this clear. The Autel KM100 is not a complete substitute for the IM508. If you guys are looking to do more EEPROM work and keys for European cars, the IM508 coupled with the XP400 is probably gonna be your choice. However, for the majority of cars here in North America, the KM100 is gonna be able to do a majority of the vehicles on the road. Plus it has some built-in features that does not come with the IM508 and they have to be purchased as an extra add-on. So with that being said, let's delve a little bit deeper into this KM100 and find out what it's capable of. Now, before we dig deeper into this tool, I do want to take a quick moment to show you guys everything that comes in the kit when you buy it. So first of all, we have the unit itself, which is roughly about the size of my iPhone. And so it's a very portable unit and it's also about half the price of the iPhone. Over here, we have the Bluetooth wireless dongle that also has a built-in light. So if you push this button, it's got a little flashlight in there to help you find the OBD2 port. You also get this cable, which is USB-C to USB-C in order for you to connect the dongle to the unit. In some applications, it will advise you to connect it using the wire. There are some vehicles that you don't wanna program wirelessly. So always make sure to have this cable at the ready. Over here, as you can see, they give you a charging cable and a charging block. The kit also comes with two universal I keys. These are universal smart keys that can be generated to many different applications. They also come in various button configurations. We're gonna get a little bit deeper into these later on in the video. Over here we have the cable that's used to do remote renews, which basically allows us to unlock previously locked keys. Some smart keys on some vehicles will become locked whenever they're programmed to a car. And so before you can reuse it and program it to another vehicle, you may have to unlock it. That's what this cable is for. Now this really only applies to OEM keys, not really aftermarket keys, which by the way, if you guys are gonna be using the universal I keys, there really is no need to unlock the keys. These can be regenerated over and over again as many times as you like. So so even if you program this to a car and then something happens, maybe the customer doesn't want this key, so you wanna be able to reuse it on a different vehicle, you can absolutely do that. All you have to do is regenerate the key using the tool. So now we know everything that comes in the kit, let's go ahead and dig deeper into the unit. All right guys, so here's the main menu. As you can see, we have quite a few different functions. So starting up here at the top, you can see we have our universal key. That is to generate our universal I keys. Now I will get a little bit deeper into these because these universal I keys are actually really awesome and they can save you a ton of money, especially when it comes to having to inventory keys. But we'll get into that a little bit later in the video. Next up, you can see we have reading and cloning which is basically a function that allows you to read the chip inside of the key and also clone it. Over here, we have a transponder function, which we can use to generate transponders. Over here, we have a frequency detection where we can test our remotes. Down here, we have the emo function, which is the immobilizer function. That's what we're gonna use in order to program the keys. Then we have some more special functions down here. We'll get into that in a minute. But let me start off by selecting reading and cloning. So basically, let's go in here and we're gonna read a key. It's instructing us to put either a chip into the chip hole right here or put your key into this hole. So right now I have this key for a Chevy Cruze. Let's go ahead and stick it into the slot right here. And then we're gonna hit read. It's reading the transponder inside the key. 
And here we can see all the information about this key. Up here you can see we have a chip model. We have an emo type. It's telling us it's a high tag 2 ID46. It's giving us a transponder ID, the lock status, which basically tells you whether or not the key is locked. This key is programmed to a vehicle. So right now, if you wanted to try to reuse this key on another vehicle, you would first have to unlock it, which means you'd have to open it up, take the circuit board out, use a special function in the key tool along with this cable, like I mentioned before, unlock the chip, then you can reprogram it to another vehicle. Now, as far as cloning the chip in this key, basically you drop this in there and we're gonna hit clone. Now this is a transponder 46, so whenever you clone these keys, it does require that you do a password calculation. So what the tool instructs you to do is put the antenna of this tool up against the ignition coil. I'm referring to the antenna around the keyhole where you stick the key in. It's going to detect the coil around the ignition. Then it's going to calculate the password and allow you to write it to a clone chip. Now here's where it's asking you to put the tool up against the ignition coil. You can see that's the key going into the keyhole. And essentially, every time you insert the key and turn the key on, there's a signal that's being passed back and forth between the chip and also the antenna. The Autel is going to pick that signal up. It's going to calculate the password. Then it's going to allow you to clone it to a chip. So we've got the key tool pressed up against the ignition coil. I'm going to go ahead and stick the key in, turn the ignition on. And we may have to do this a few times. So key off, take the key out, put the key back in, turn it on, do it again. Basically, just do this until it tells you whether or not it acquired the signal. There we have it, it is now calculating. As you can see, it calculated our password. So that was just a brief overview of the cloning function of this tool. Next up, I wanted to show you guys the transponder function. So if we click on that, you can see up here at the top, we have transponder generation. So this is where you would generate a transponder. So if we go down here, let's say a Ford 4D63, if you wanted to generate one of these chips, of course, you would have to buy whatever chip works with this tool. So if we back out, this second option here is pretty cool. This is a transponder simulation. And so basically what this allows you to do is use the tool to simulate a key chip. Now moving back to the home page, let's go ahead and click on frequency detection. This is something very useful, especially if you have a remote that's not working and you're not sure if the problem is with the remote or with the vehicle, you can just use this function to test the frequency of the remote. So I'm gonna go ahead and unlock this. You guys can see how it just registered the frequency and it tells us what frequency the key is. So I'm gonna click it again. You guys can see this remote is 315 megahertz. Now we're gonna go into special functions. And here's where you're gonna find a lot of cool different things that you can do. First of all, you can do key unlocking. Again, if you guys have a key, an OEM key that was previously locked to another vehicle, you can use this tool to renew that key. So here we're in the Dodge menu. Let's just pick any of these. You can see they give you a little diagram right here of how to connect to the circuit board using the supplied cable. You basically have to solder to the points on the board then you hit unlock and it will unlock the key. Now, another function that you can use this for is unlocking Toyota smart keys. This function is very easy to do. You don't have to open the key. There's no soldering involved. You basically just stick the key into the slot up here, hit unlock and it will unlock the key. Now, let me warn you guys, Toyota keys starting from 2018, 2019 and up, a lot of those keys cannot be unlocked. I know this personally because I ran into one on a 2020 where I used the key tool to unlock the key. And even when I used the key tool to read the key again, it showed that it was unlocked. However, it would not program back into the vehicle. On those newer Toyotas, once the keys are locked, they're locked for good. Another function that you can do here is you can do button adjustment, which basically means that if you generate a universal I key and program it to the vehicle, and for whatever reason, the button arrangement is not correct. Let's say when you push the lock button, the doors unlock. And when you push the unlock button, the doors lock. And you need to switch those button arrangements. All you got to do is take the key, stick it into the slot, select the button adjustment, and you can switch them around however you like. Okay, so I have another universal I key that has a battery in it. And so we're going to slide it in here. We'll hit retry. It's detecting the universal remote. And here we have our button functions. Again, you can see that the unlock icon is unlock. The lock icon is lock. Remote start is remote start. The trunk button is the trunk. And the panic is the panic. So again, you can go in here and you can move them around. So let's say uh, that you wanted to move the unlock button and make it the lock. You could just select lock. And then you wanted to make the lock button the unlock button. You can go in there and select unlock. And now all you have to do is confirm writing and this will write that button adjustment into the key. You can see it's writing it right now. And now you can see that the unlock icon is now the lock button and the lock icon is now the unlock button. You can also do combination buttons where if there's another function, let's say like a convertible top and your key doesn't have that button, you could do a combination where in this case, if you push the remote start and the trunk button at the same time, you can make it work for let's say a convertible top. 
Lots of really cool stuff that you can do with these universal eye keys. And just as easy as it was to change the button configurations, you can just as easily restore the initial value by just clicking here and it restores everything back to the way it was. Now, another cool special function that you can use is this ignition coil detection. This is useful when you have a vehicle that's a no start and you're not sure whether the problem is in the key or the antenna coil on the vehicle. So if we select ignition coil detection, all you gotta do is take the antenna on top of the tool right here, put it up against the antenna on the vehicle, put the key in, turn it, and see whether or not you're getting a signal. Very useful to have. Some other special functions that you have are these Mazda ID49 smart key warning lamp clearings. Basically on some Mazdas, when you program a key to them, if the key is not the exact or correct FCC ID or the correct button arrangement, or sometimes if it's an aftermarket key, the vehicle may still start and run with the key, but you're gonna get a light on the dash. This function is used to help you get rid of that light. There's also a function for the Nissan and Infiniti, and there's another universal key baud adjustment. I'm not exactly sure what that does, guys, but if you need it, it's there. Now, moving into the immobilizer side, I'm not gonna go too much into detail right now because I am gonna be showing you how to program a key on a Nissan later on in this video. But basically, when you come in here, you can see that you have all different manufacturers that you can program keys for. Everything from domestic, import, Europeans, the list goes on and on. If you guys are not sure about compatibility, you can go onto the Autel website and they do have a compatibility chart where you can go in there, put the tool that you're working with, the make and model, and see what you can and cannot do with it. We also have a selection here for automatically identifying the VIN. Now I will mention that the tool works best as long as you're connected to the internet. So wherever you're going to program keys, make sure you take a Wi-Fi hotspot with you. A lot of times I just use my phone as a hotspot and that usually works good enough. So now that we've covered everything else, let me take you guys into the big reason that I love this tool and that is the universal key generation function. Basically what this allows us to do is it allows us to generate over 700 plus FCC IDs for all different makes and models. Of course, this function only works with the Autel Universal iKeys, but the selection of iKeys is really awesome. I'm gonna show you guys here in a little bit my inventory of Autel keys. These here are just the basic design, but they do have these keys in OEM form that look just like the OEM keys. But before we get into that, let's go ahead and click on the function here for Universal Key. Now here's where we can find the key that we're looking for. You can do this a couple different ways. You can put in the VIN number, you can put in the license plate number, or you can just come in here and put your make and model. So let's go ahead and select a Chevrolet. We'll choose a model, let's say a Trailblazer, and we'll choose a year, 2020. You can see the reference FCC ID number is a HYQ4EA. That's what the key originally looks like. Now Autel does have a universal key that Looks pretty similar to this one. It's not the exact same one. It's the one for the Cadillac, but I've had a lot of luck selling the Cadillac style to people who have this type of key. But even if you don't have that key, you can always use just one of these universal keys. So let's go ahead and generate it. I'm gonna select it. It tells us to go ahead and put the universal key in the slot. Now, of course, you wanna make sure that you put a battery in your key. These keys do not come with batteries, so you do have to buy them. Now we're gonna go ahead and select generate universal key. It's acquiring the universal key information and now it's generating our key. Okay, so our universal key is generated. That probably took about a minute or so. So here when you're done, you wanna just go ahead and hit completed. And now our universal I key has been generated. It is now ready to be programmed to the vehicle like any other FCC ID with HYQ4EA. It is that simple, guys. Like I said, the cool thing about these keys is that they are reusable. You can generate them as many times as you like. So if I wanna back out of this menu and generate this key to another FCC ID, I can do it no problem. Even if I program this key to a vehicle and it becomes locked to that vehicle, let's say there's a problem with the customer, maybe the payment didn't go through, you already programmed the key, and so you wanna take your key back, it's no problem. All you gotta do is stick it back in here and regenerate it, and the key will be as good as new and ready to use on another vehicle. That's something you cannot do with OEM keys or even aftermarket keys. Okay guys, so just a quick overview of some of the keys that Autel offers in their universal format. These are some keys from my personal inventory. Like I said, I stock all different kinds of keys for lots of different makes and models, but what I love about these keys is that they do offer them in the OEM shell. So here we have one that's a Nissan style key. Now I do have this in the four button configuration without the remote start and also the three button configuration. I'm not gonna open up all my keys to show you guys, but basically this here is a universal smart key and can be generated to work with 
over 700 different vehicles using an Autel device like this one. Now, technically you can generate these universal keys using the IM508. However, what I like about the KM100 is that it's way more portable. It's a lot easier to use. You don't have to pull out the separate attachment, which is the XP200, pull the cable out, connect it to the unit in order to generate your universal key. You can simply just pull out this unit, slide the key in here. Of course, put a battery in it first, select your universal key and then generate it. Now, the reason I love these keys so much is that when it comes to inventorying keys, for example, let's say Nissan, you might look at a key for a Nissan Altima and a Nissan Maxima, and the key looks exactly the same. However, the FCC IDs of the keys and the part numbers are actually different, meaning that you couldn't use a key from a Nissan Pathfinder on a Nissan Altima. Typically, they're going to be different FCC IDs. So rather than having to inventory one of every FCC ID that there is for Nissan, you can simply have one key and be able to generate that key to work with whatever vehicle you're programming the key for. All you got to do is look up what FCC ID is the correct one for the vehicle. I usually do this by going online and looking through the catalogs. Usually UHSHardware.com is a pretty reliable and accurate source for looking up what type of key your vehicle needs, find the correct FCC ID for your make and model, then find that FCC ID in the Autel, generate your key to that, and then program it to the vehicle. That will save you tons of money in inventory. Now, not only do we have the Nissan style, we also have this Hyundai style. Of course, these keys do come with the emergency blade. So make sure that whatever you're using it for uses the same emergency blade. Here we have the Dodge style. This is the five button configuration. I also have the four button configuration. Now, the other cool thing about these keys is that even if you don't have the correct button configuration, you can buy the correct shell for the key that you're looking for. Take the internals out of this key and move it over to your new shell. Here we have the GM style key, which is the Cadillac style. Very high quality key, very beautiful indeed. A lot of people have no problem taking this key rather than some of the older Cadillac keys. I like to sell these as upgrades because typically those older Cadillac keys, they start to fall apart really easily. And these keys, well, they're just better made. Then over here, we have the Honda style key. This is one of the ones that I sell more often. Again, people like the style key. And so even for some of the older style Hondas, when I offer them this newer style, they prefer to take this one. Again, the cool thing about these keys is that yes, you can change the shell. In one instance, I had a customer with a 2021 Acura and they preferred to have the Acura style key. And so basically I generated and programmed one of these keys and then I took the internals out of the key and then I put it into an Acura shell. Just to show you guys, this is the shell for the Acura key. So there is nothing inside this key, but essentially what you can do is take the guts out of this key and it fits right into this key. These shells can be purchased really cheaply online and are good to have whenever you have a customer that is a little more picky and they want the key that looks like their original key. Just a quick tip for you guys. Also, I will add that, uh, the Autel Universal I key for the three button Nissan only comes in this button configuration, which I'm not exactly sure why, because I've never seen a Nissan that has this button arrangement. Typically, if it's a three button, this button down here is going to be a panic button. A lot of the vehicles like the Nissan Rogues and the Jukes don't have an electronic trunk. So it's typically just a panic button here. However, it's no big deal. I still like to buy these because all I do is I buy the shell for the three button key that I need. All I got to do is take the internals out of this key and move it over into the shell. Now over here, we have the BMW FEM style key which is a very beautiful high quality key and it is required in order to generate some of these BMW keys. Oops, I did leave out one key, which is this Buick style key. This is also a universal I key. So this can be generated for many different vehicles. Here at the top, you can see I have a few of these universal I keys. These are the generic styles that Autel offers. They do come in a lot of different button configurations and I pretty much inventory all of them. Now I'm not gonna go through and open every single package to show you guys. You can go online and look at all the different button configurations that they offer, but just know that these keys these do not come with an emergency blade. So when I pop this open, what you're gonna find is that we have a slot right here and also a little set screw right there. And what these are designed for is for you to be able to use flip key blades as emergency blades. Now I'm gonna be getting a little more into detail when it comes to flip keys and flip key blades in another video, but just know that yes, you can put emergency blades into these keys. Now, one key that I am kind of leaving out is this Ford key right here. This is a very special key. And the reason I say that is because this key is the only key out of all of the Autel keys that you can generate it to the 900 megahertz frequency. Now, contrary to some of the things you might read about these keys and them being able to work for 900 megahertz, it is not true. You cannot generate the 902 megahertz key for the Ford with any of these other universal keys. You have to have this key. Now, the problem with that is that this key is kind of elusive. 
I can't really find it locally or really anywhere in the US. When I check with my key suppliers, they never seem to have these available. However, you can buy these online from places like AliExpress, these in particular I did get while I was on a trip to Mexico. I was in Mexico City for the Auto Mechanica event and one of the vendors there sold these to me. But like I said guys, if you run into the Fords, especially the ones that have remote start, those are typically the higher frequencies like 902 megahertz. You cannot use any of these keys to generate that. You have to have this key. So now that I've shown you guys some of the available universal keys for the Autel, let's go ahead and generate one and program it to a vehicle. All right, guys, so we're going to be generating a key and programming it to a 2022 Nissan Altima. Now, what I like to start by doing is going online to a website like UHSHardware.com, punching in the make and model of the vehicle that we're going to be programming a key to and finding the correct FCC ID for the key we need to generate. So on the tool, we're going to start by going to Universal Key. We're going to select Nissan. For the model, we're going to select Altima. For the year, we're going to select 2022. Again, the important thing is that we find the correct FCC ID and also the button configuration. Now, this vehicle originally does come with remote start. However, the customer bought this vehicle from a used car lot and the key that they gave him was a key without remote start. So obviously, at some point in time, they had lost the keys and whoever sold them the key sold them a key without remote start. Now, the key still functions and everything. However, the customer does want the remote start function because, of course, his car comes equipped with it. Now, I did already successfully add a key to this one. The remote start works great. However, the customer did call me back because now he wants a second key. So that's what we're going to be doing today. So we're going to scroll through these FCC IDs and we're going to locate the five button remote start key that has FCC ID KR5TXN4. There's our key right there. As you can see, it is the five button with the remote start. And so before we can generate this key, we are going to have to put a battery in it. Again, these universal keys do not come with batteries. So you do have to buy them separately. In this case, they use a CR2032 battery. So we're basically just gonna take this part of the shell and we're gonna pop in the battery. Then we're gonna take the other half of the shell and then we're gonna put it together. Line it up correctly, then just pop it back together. Now our key has a battery in it and it's ready to generate. So we'll go ahead and drop it into the slot and hit generate universal key. As you can see, it's generating our key. This should only take about a minute or so. Key generation is completed and now our key is ready to program to the vehicle. Okay guys, so 2022 Nissan Altima. Again, I've got the KM100 right here. You can see I've already got the Bluetooth dongle connected. And over here on the center console, I've got three keys. Now this one here is the original Nissan key um, that's already programmed to the vehicle. And this one is an Autel generated I key that I already programmed, everything works great. And this is the key here that we're gonna be adding now, the way we're gonna do this today is we're gonna do an all keys lost situation. That way we can erase all of the previous keys that were in the memory that no longer is with the vehicle. And so basically we're gonna be starting fresh. We're gonna go ahead and start by going into Emo. Then we're gonna select Nissan right here, Nissan. Uh, let's just go ahead and do automatic selection. It's telling us to turn the hazard lights on. So we'll go ahead and hit the hazard switch. The hazard lights are now on and it wants us to open and close the door. I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. It's scanning the vehicle system. Okay, so I'm gonna go into IMMO status scan. And here it's gonna scan the modules. And if you look, there are no DTCs present in the BCM. So we're gonna go ahead and do all keys lost guided. And I'm gonna go ahead and shut the vehicle off. Our hazard lights are still on. And we're gonna go ahead and hit start and it's going to obtain the pin number. It tells us execution of this function will erase all keys. So make sure you have all the keys that you need to learn to the vehicle ready. We do, so we're gonna click yes. Turn the ignition off, turn on the hazard lights and open and close the door. We already did that, so we'll hit okay. Now here it's giving us a little warning. This is our BCM code that it pulled up and it's letting us know that if we have one of these other BCM codes, then attempting this programming may be risky. Some of these BCMs can actually lock up or become bricked just by doing the pin code reading. And so you need to make sure that your VIN number is not part of this blacklist. Now, if you guys didn't know, you could go online and Google Nissan BCM blacklist. You're gonna find a set of numbers and those are gonna be the BCM numbers you wanna stay away from. Again, our number here does not match any of the ones on the blacklist. So we're gonna go ahead and click yes. Now it's telling us to place the original smart key up against the button. So this here is our original I key. I'm gonna put it up against the button. Just in case you guys didn't know, our ignition button is right here. Make sure you have it where the emblem is right where the button is. We're gonna go ahead and click okay. Establishing communication. Okay, so success, it pulled the pin code. Now it's telling us to push the ignition switch and put the key that you wanna learn up against the button. So I'm gonna push it. And you can see the instrument cluster just came on. 
and if you pay attention the security light went off that is a good sign so we're going to go ahead and hit ok turn off the ignition so let's push it again ignition is off now we'll hit ok program success continue to program the next one yes we're basically going to do the same thing with the next key so i'm going to put the next key up against the push button then we're going to push it once the instrument cluster comes on and pay attention to that security light you see how it went away that means our key is now registered so we're going to hit ok it says turn the ignition off so we'll turn it off instrument cluster is now off and then we're going to hit ok program success continue to the next one yes now we're basically going to do the same thing with our final key this one here put it up against the start button and we're going to push it push it once instrument cluster should light up and pay attention to that security light right there it just went away and so we're going to hit ok it says turn the ignition off the ignition is now off and we'll hit ok programming success continue to the next one no now it's telling us to put the first key that was learned up against the button that's going to be this original nissan key so we'll put it up against the button then we're going to push it once the instrument cluster should light up instrument cluster came on so we'll hit ok now it says turn it off and wait for three seconds so we're going to count to three and you can see we already have a message here key registration complete and so now we should be ready to hit ok programming complete check if remote control is operating properly start the engine and wait for five seconds so i'm going to hit ok and we should be done here with the tool yep so we have success there all the way around now i'm going to go ahead and shut the uh, hazard lights off then i'm going to open and close the door and then we're going to check to see if our remotes work so we'll start with the original one lock unlock that works we'll go ahead and try the second one so lock and unlock that works and then we'll try the third one lock unlock now let's go ahead and try to start the vehicle so foot on the brake pedal hit the start button and car starts up right away and just like that we're done all right guys so before we end off the video a couple things i wanted to mention about the tool number one is that this thing actually comes with the built-in apb 112 if you guys aren't familiar with that basically what it is is a key simulator and it can be used in order to do an all keys loss situation on a newer toyota now the apb 112 is an item that has to be purchased separately if you guys have either an im 508 or the im 506 they do not come with the tools when you buy them and the simulator is usually somewhere between two and three hundred dollars now the simulator is really useful if you run into an all keys loss situation on a newer toyota the newer toyotas require a 12 digit rolling pin code and so what you can do on some of these is actually read the eprom information by obd using the tool then with that eprom information this thing can actually simulate the key that was programmed to the vehicle so you can actually start the vehicle with the antenna on this this also allows you to add a key easily on these newer toyotas by simulating the original key and then using that to add the second key so a really cool feature to have built into the tool like i said if you guys have an im 508 or an im 608 it does not come with it you have to buy the apb 112 separately with this km100 it's built into the tool now, second thing I wanted to mention, if you guys are buying this tool in order to do cloning, by that I mean cloning of transponders, let it be known that the VVDI super chip from X-Horse does not work with this tool. I know a lot of guys get confused because that's really the most popular chip that's on the market. However, the VVDI super chip does not work with the Autel. Now, as far as what chips do work with the Autel, I'm not exactly sure, though I have seen several videos of people actually cloning chips with this tool. So I know that there are some chips on the market that do work with the Autel. I'm just not exactly sure which ones. Other than that, this tool is one of my top five favorite tools that I have in my possession. This is easily the first key programmer that I go for anytime I go to program keys, simply because it's so portable and easy to use. Now, will it do everything? No, but it does do probably 90% of the vehicles that I program keys for. And for the rest that this thing can't do, I have several other tools for that. And all those other tools are a lot more expensive than this one. Now, if you guys are interested in purchasing this product, I will leave a link down in the description below. I do wanna let you guys know that I was not paid to review this product. I'm simply giving you guys my honest opinion and showing you all of the features that it has. Now, if you guys do decide to buy the product using the link below, any purchase that you buy through that Amazon affiliate link does go to help the channel. So thank you guys for all of your support. Anyways, at this point, I'm gonna end out the video. Like I always say, thank you guys for watching. I hope you found the video useful, informational, educational, entertaining. If you did, Make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.